In this video, we'll look at how to paint golden subjects in watercolor. Here's what you'll see. We'll talk about my favorite colors to create vibrant golds. I'll share the formula I use to paint golden subjects, and we'll take you through how to paint this little golden bell. We'll take a brief look at the steps in painting a more complex subject, this gold ring. By the end of this video, you'll have tools and techniques that you can apply to your own paintings. Let's get started. Here are the materials that I'll use today. We'll use 140 pound cold press paper. I like to use the smoother side and you can cut it into smaller pieces if you wish. Because this is a small study, it's not necessary to stretch or soak the paper in water. I find it helpful to tape the paper to some kind of sturdy board like cardboard. I'll use this small pointed round brush. You can find a link in the description. Feel free to use your favorite brush. And I wanted to mention that I create grays and blacks with a mix of Windsor and Newton, ultramarine blue, French ultramarine blue, and burnt sienna. And let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video of how I do that. Let's talk about my favorite colors that I use to create vibrant golds. I'll be using Windsor & Newton professional watercolor paints, but feel free to use your favorite brands and experiment with the colors that you have on hand. And you know what's funny? I keep coming back to the same colors. Windsor Lemon and Yellow Ochre. Thin layers of color. I keep layering those colors over each other to come up with a beautiful golden color. Burnt Sienna works really well with those yellows. Burnt Umber does too. I have used other yellows, especially at the end of a painting, to refine, but I keep going back to Windsor Lemon and Yellow Ochre. So we're going to take a look at how to paint this little bell in watercolor, and I've done some cutting and pasting here to show you what it might look like as part of a cat's collar. Now I don't have a reference photo for this painting. I did a little bit of research and I'm looking at different photos to use as a guide and I'm using my imagination in this painting so it's a lot of fun. Let's take a look at the formula I use to paint golden subjects. First, I create a pale gray map of what will be the darkest parts. Then we establish the foundational colors. These are the lightest values of yellow and we'll keep it pale because it will go darker. Next, layer by layer, begin to build the details and the darker values. I often call this round one. Start with what will be the darkest parts, usually grays and browns, then the midtones, those colors that are not quite as dark. And it won't look right yet, but more layers of color are coming. Apply layers of Windsor lemon and yellow ochre, and with each thin layer, the golden color is beginning to appear. Then repeat the steps, slowly going darker. I often call this round two. Revisit the darkest parts and the midtones, and then the yellows again. And we keep repeating the process using thin layers, making decisions about what to do next after each layer has dried. And now let's see how we can apply this formula to the golden bell. This is a nice small study that you can use to hone your skills and the drawings in the description so you can paint it yourself. I should tell you, this is an accelerated version of the painting, so we skip some parts and if you'd like to see the entire step-by-step -step painting, I invite you to take a look at the tutorial in our online school. There you can learn how to mix the colors and you'll see every step in the process. Now let's move into it. And we begin with a pale brownish gray is what I used. A pale map of what will be the darkest lines and shapes. And I'm using a brownish gray because I didn't want the color to appear too bluish. This is the underpainting. This is Windsor Lemon. It represents the lightest value. When it dried, I moved into yellow ochre. Really pale, really thin consistency working around the lightest parts. Now this is what will be the darkest part and we will take it darker. So I lay in, this is like the consistency of milk. 
and I'm softening the edge with my clean, barely damp brush. And I'm going to go around the entire edge of the bell because darker values create the impression that that part of the shape is curving away from us. So this is what will be the darkest part. And here I'm laying it into that little shape. And you see, it's not dark enough. To enhance the impression of contour, this is mid-tone. This is slightly darker. It's a little thinner. And I'm softening the edge. My brush is clean and barely damp. The idea is to create the beginnings of the impression that the edges of the bell are curving away from us. And you can repeat this as often as you wish. I felt like that's not dark enough. So I went in again. It's really thin. It's like the consistency of tea. Another layer of Windsor Lemon because I felt like the lightest parts need to be a little more intense, but it's only the consistency of tea. It's really pale. When it's dry, another thin layer of yellow ochre. It looks dark, but it's only tea to very thin milk. And I'm working around the lightest parts. I want those shapes in the center to remain lighter in value. And I'm going to soften this edge in just a moment. There we go. I'm softening to create a lighter value of yellow ochre. Place a little more over there. Now it's time to reinforce the darkest parts again. And this is going to help us decide what to do next with those yellows. This is the consistency of thin cream. And I'm reinforcing this dark edge. I just felt like, mm, I think I want to take this a little darker. You know what? I'm using a gray that contains a lot of burnt sienna because I want this to appear kind of brownish and I like how burnt sienna, here it looks kind of brownish there. I like how burnt sienna interacts with the yellows that I'm using. Here I'm thinning it out and another layer of Windsor lemon. I felt like I wanted just to brighten up the color. And I'm very gently, barely touching the brush to the paper. After the bell was dry, I went in and used the same steps to create the colors and values in the ring. And now we're at the end of this painting. And I thought, to brighten the color, let's apply a different kind of yellow. Here, I'm gently laying in a thin layer of Indian yellow, just to brighten things up. Layer by layer, you can create this rich golden color. If you'd like to watch the entire step-by-step -step process in real time, we've got a link in the description that will take you to the tutorial in our watercolor school. Next, you're going to see how to apply this formula to more complex subjects. But first, if you're finding this video helpful, I invite you to click the like button and subscribe because it helps the channel and I sure do appreciate it. Thank you. And now let's take a look at how to apply this formula, the same colors, to this golden ring. This is a quick overview of the process. It'll give you an idea of the formula. We'll begin with a pale gray map of what will be the darker lines and shapes. I'm laying in pale brownish gray anywhere that will be the darkest parts, and I'm working around the lightest shapes, or the shapes that will be lightest in value. Here, I'm laying in a thinner consistency where I'm seeing slightly darker brownish gray. Next, we'll lay in the first pale layers of yellow. This is the consistency of tea. And when that's dry, return to what will be the darkest lines and shapes, using the gray to take them a little darker. This will help us to keep track of where these darker lines and shapes will be. Here, I'm laying in burnt sienna wherever I see browns. I'm laying in a thin layer of yellow ochre next. And now for the mid-tones. I'm looking for grays and browns that are not the darkest, but I'd like to go a little darker. 
so I'm using a thinner consistency. Here we've got another layer of yellow ochre, and when that's dry, another layer of Windsor lemon. And with each layer, we're getting closer to that golden color. And those lightest shapes that we're working around, that's what helps to create the shine. To create more intense colors and values, repeat the process. Reinforce the darkest lines and shapes with the gray, a slightly thicker consistency, more like thin cream. Then refine the mid-tones, asking yourself what needs to go a little darker. Use a thinner consistency of gray. Another layer of yellow ochre, and then another layer of Windsor lemon as we intensify the golden color. And when each layer dries, decide what to do next. For the final refinements, reinforce the darkest parts again, the mid-tones, refine color, look for anywhere that could go a little darker. Here I'm using pale gray to create the shadow. And there it is. I use the same formula, sometimes repeating steps, making decisions after each layer of color has dried. And with multiple layers, you can create deep, rich, interesting golds. To summarize, and I encourage you to experiment with creating gold in watercolor. Use thin layers of color, allow each layer to dry before deciding what to do next, to create the gold, my favorite color mixes are layers of Windsor lemon and yellow ochre. I like burnt sienna. I think it works well with those yellows, but I encourage you to experiment with different yellows. You could use this small study and just play around with colors. The formula, you start with the foundational colors, the optional pale map, the underpainting, a pale map of colors, then you move into round one of the details and darker values. Then you move into round two where you repeat and refine darkest parts, mid-tones, lightest values. Remember to take breaks and keep repeating. Take breaks, take photos, look at your painting from a distance until you're happy with what you see. Now to show you that this formula really does work, here are some of my paintings that are even more complex. For these golden, the golden parts, I began with a pale layer of Windsor lemon. That's the lightest value. Then I used layers of yellow ochre. I used the typical gray mix that we use of, I think it was burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And I also used a bit of Indian yellow in this just to brighten up some of the golden parts. This trumpet, it's simple. I used black ink, a black ink pen, Burnt Sienna or Burnt Umber, Ultramarine Blue, Windsor Lemon, and Yellow Ochre. And that's it. And this painting sold immediately. And I've got a copy for myself because I play trumpet. I just love it. This was one of my earliest paintings back when I first started, and it actually won an award, which was huge to me as a beginner. But the trombone is the same colors, Windsor lemon, yellow ochre, and that gray mix. And there's a little bit of green in the trombone bell that I used with a mix of the, probably I used the Windsor lemon and ultramarine blue. This is actually a friend of mine who I play trumpet with. And uh, he, he goes out to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and he just plays on the street just for fun because he loves to do it. What a fun painting that was. These colors and this formula really do work and I use them in all of my paintings. I hope you find these techniques helpful in your own paintings. If you have any questions or suggestions, put them in the description. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.